Okay, so back on our first gen Dodge Studebaker swap. Um, plans keep changing. I'm supposed to go to paint. Paint got delayed. It was in the trailer, ready to go, and then I got it back. Anyway, we're gonna keep working on it. <laughs> we straightened this bumper to about 80%. He's gonna take it from there. It was all mangled. We straightened the grill. It was all mangled. Luke gave me a hand with that just to get our spacing kind of apart. Put that on, put the fender on, put a new starter on. The transmission tunnel was all rotten, so fix that. But we lost that footage. We sent the card out, tried to recover the, the footage on that because it was pretty good. So we're gonna try and get it running, stopping and moving, and then and then she's gone, then, then I'm done with it. All right, so on our first gen here, we're going to uh, replace the hanger bearing. It was starting to fall apart. Buy the hanger bearing cheap enough, and because it's not a Ford who welds the yoke on in front of the hanger bearing, he can replace this $39 part without buying a whole new drive shaft. So we're gonna knock some new U-joints in there. We have a video on replacing U-joints already, so check that out. Uh, some of these, when you pull them apart, have a collar on here that locks on, um, keeps it from sliding off. These, this first gen, it just slides off and it has a master spline on it. Uh, very straightforward, we'll knock this hanger bearing off. Um, there's nothing that holds that on, it's just a press fit, so. Do whatever it takes to get that on there. I told the customer I would do this job, but I don't want to spend hours behind the computer finding parts. So he supplied this and it doesn't fit. There's the old one. Doesn't fit over the splines. Wrong one. Why can't it be easy? Hell, we'll go do something else, I guess. Here we go. This is the fuel tank for it, first gen Dodge. I pulled the line off um, because we're using different lines, uh, brand new lines. Of course, I snapped the fitting off on the on the sending unit. Then we got a new sending unit, which is fine. They're hard to come by. A uh, customer grabbed it. I think you can still buy these. Problem is this this was around the, uh, the outside here and that didn't fit inside the tank. So I had to cut this off. Now this is kind of what seals it. This is kind of a tight fit inside and you can see that it just it physically it doesn't fit in that's that that's already with the a bit cut off but that's what kind of seals it on the inside there some of them have a seal on the bottom here this one also did, came with a giant opening at the top so the customer has the old one so he's gonna see if it's got another one of these for now we're just gonna drop it in there we go get in there get in there good now of course when i pulled the the other clamp off, that broke, um, and you cannot get first gen hose clamps to hold the sending unit in, but they're the same as the second gens. I, I, again, I highly recommend you do not use a first gen frame because the parts are so hard to come by. Go, go grab it for the engine, toss the rest away, and go get a nice frame, and just worry about your drive shaft and your uh, mounts. Um, keeping in mind that you'd want something with a 373 rear end. Anyway. We're gonna tighten this up. We're gonna throw the tank in there. We're gonna run some new lines, which is just plastic lines. Um, never had an issue with them. We'll run that to the engine. We'll find a place to mount the battery underneath and then we'll go from there. So here we go. All right, so I got a new hanger bearing and installed it. This was uh, 1.575 thou, I believe. So just over an inch and a half. And the hanger bearing that I originally got was for the Dodge, that didn't work. So I think this one's off of GM, but the bolt holes are the same. So I think we can throw this up. Problem is I have my fuel tank mounted now and there's a little bracket that's in a U right here. And then the fuel tank strap goes right across it here. So now I might be able to reach it from the other side, but ah, what a pain. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna mount the drive shaft up. Got some new bolts for it. You can buy these off Napa. These are the, uh, the yoke bolts. These are just a 5 16 fine thread, I believe, 5 16 head. Um, so we'll mount that up. Here we go. Okay, so fuel tank is mounted. We got to run some lines. You can pick up these cheap little fittings with the O-rings on the inside. And then I just use um, Airline. It's coated on the inside with Teflon and um, never had an issue. I've been running this stuff in my truck for like 10 years. So we'll run those inside the frame and then throw some fuel in it with a new filler neck. And then we give it some battery and it should fire. So here we go. So for poor man's um, spacing of the lines, just a zip tie around both and then a zip tie in between works really, really well. So we can run this in line with a couple tech clamps, keeps the line spaced nicely all the way along. And if you have 12 of them, 
just loop all 12 together and put a zip tie in between each one. Beautiful, works good for spark plug wires, for brake lines, whatever you want. Here we go. Okay, so the original fender here had um, uh, a scoop kind of built in behind it, but to make the turbo fit and the intercooler piping, I had to cut a section of that out. I cut the section out on this side to try and kind of match it, um, but the intercooler piping that was reasonably priced is also on back order, and it has been for a long time. So I found this piece, which is pretty close. This is off a of Ford that we grabbed at a scrapyard, probably for the Audi, but we didn't end up using it. And it doesn't fit too bad, so customers are okay with that. What we do have to do is make this elbow fit because it's too long. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a section out of this elbow, which is Dodge, and then shorten it up a bit, which isn't great for flow, but he's not souping this thing up like crazy. It's just a V pump. So we'll cut that, we'll shorten that, and then uh, we'll take a stab at tigging, because let's start tigging. big goops on the inside that's gonna go through the intercooler. So not bad for my first one. Um, maybe I'll just write Stefan on the corner of the elbow here. Yeah, I'll engrave it. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that, that's not bad. So here's the plan. You guys have seen me go to Ian for all my aluminum welding before. And um, I figured I'd just try our little TIG 200 a little bit by myself first and get used to the machine, change a couple of the settings. I'm gonna go over to him, we're gonna get some lessons on uh, some tips and some tricks. I'll come back and play with the machine a little bit more, and then we'll get him to come over and show us properly on the machine. But um, for my first one, I never actually welding aluminum before. That's not bad, I'm okay with that. So we'll grind that off a little bit, shine that up a bit, make it look good for the, uh, the stewed. When we get Ian back here, we'll make another one and we'll do that one uh, so she's pretty. But uh, for now, that'll get us out the door. Right, kitty? Right, boss? Been a while since it's ran, so I better fill up that turbo. Get a little spin there, suck that down in there. Yeah, go down, go down. It's not going down, but anyway, there's oil in there. Okay, so we've had a we've had a few first starts the last little bit, and this one is like the least dramatic of them all. Even though this one, if you go way back to our everything to look for when you're buying a diesel, this is that engine. Um, it fired up pretty good back then. I got the system bled, um, and it's one wire here to the injection pump. We'll put that on, we'll crank it over. Um, no cooling in it uh, because um, I have to put one plug in there yet. Not a big deal because there's no fan belt on it so it wouldn't move the coolant anyway. It's just once in a while we need a little bit of motivation to uh, keep the project going. And I gotta send this to the customer. He started this long time ago, uh, dreaming of it even before then. So we'll see if we can get it started. Uh, transmissions in park. And even still, I chalked the wheels and jacked up the back in case it wants to do something stupid. We've got transmission oil in it. We've got engine oil in it. Let's see, I say that, but I'm still kind of nervous. I don't know why. Anyway, here we go. One wire here. Whoop. Let's give it some power. You hear that? Oh, that's like the, the least amount of work to get an engine running. Let's see if it'll go. Oh, that's a vacuum pump. <laughs> what is that noise? We're gonna have to do something with that vacuum pump. And give it some full fuel, maybe. <laughs> How's that for first start? We're gonna do a full send on this.
drain everything. Like I put new fuel in, obviously, and then put conditioner in it. Got some pretty gross fuel in that injection pump. Would you use like head and shoulders? <laughs> Does. Whoa. That's nasty stuff. first start anyway okay so we got it running which is not a big deal now we got to get it stopping um we've already done all new brakes in the front and the back i have to run some lines yet but we have to run a master now when we originally started this it was probably poor planning on my part we really don't have any room for a vacuum uh system so i told the owner we need to do a hydro boost which is just basically just running your power steering pump and your fluid through the, the the master cylinder and then going from there now i told them uh get me a short master hydro boost that fits in between here and he came back with this and that does not fit not even slightly not even remotely i thought maybe we could get a um hydro boost master that goes underneath the floor maybe from like a racing application and then he came back and gave me this, which is the original master and clutch pedal out of this truck, I believe. Um, this would be underneath the floor. So what we're going to do is somehow we'll get rid of this master. And we'll basically just put the, the rod there on this. We'll get rid of the clutch pedal. Um, this would have bolted to the Studebaker frame, but we now have a Dodge frame. So basically, that's no good. This bracket's no good. That's no good. I have a pedal. <laughs> so I can make the pedal somehow hook up to this, make my own bracket, and mount it underneath the floor. That is a lot of fabricating. Two or three days. Well, about two days anyway, by the time I get that figured out and mounted underneath and whatever. So I thought we'd go on to the shifter cable to make this thing move. Transmission's been rebuilt. I had nothing to do with that. I, got it brand new torque converter in there it's got fluid in there so that shouldn't have to worry we just need to make it move so i got a shifter cable because he said he was going to drop off a shifter for me and what he dropped off was i think that this is a handle off a harvester um so one of those old antique like harvesters to pick up hay so that went in there like that so he wants this as a shifter to kind of go that sits in there and it must pivot right here and then the cable gets connected to that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like a really long throw. Anyway, by the time I figure this out and make this work, I'm gonna have another couple days into it. So I think we're gonna stop the video here. So if you're intrigued as to how I'm gonna make this work, um, we're gonna have a Cummins Crew Cab Studebaker with a harvester shifter and a GM hydro boost underneath the floor and it's going to be fantastic I think.